Uh, in the monomial theorem, uh, you will see that uh, it involves this combination formula. So the first, uh, we have done the first video uh, that is uh, using the introductions of Pascal triangle and then uh, the monomial theorem. Right, and second video, we actually use the specific term formula to find a specific term. Right, so this last video is to show how we can actually uh, evaluate this combinations formula because some questions actually require you to be able to evaluate. Right, so what, um, what is this combinations formula about? Right, so it's the combinations formula is actually equals to n factorial. Okay, over r factorial and then n minus r factorial. So what it means is that if I would give you um, an example involving numeric numerical value, if you have that say um, n4, right, this one means n factorial over 4 factorial, okay, and then n minus 4 factorial, right. So to know how to evaluate this, we need to understand what is this factorial thing? What does n factorial mean? All right, so why do we have to learn factorial? Actually, factorial is a very useful and simple uh, way of calculating. It's actually used in the chapters on probability uh, but we're not going to uh, delve deeper into it. Okay, we're just going to understand how to evaluate it and how to use it um, to solve problem sums uh, where it actually need us to be able to evaluate it in binomial theorem. Right, so factorials actually have many practical applications in the real world. Um, for example, some companies that actually use factorials to look at permutations and combinations. One example is, for example, if you are a company that you need to determine the number of trucks needed to supply, you know, to supply staffs into your different store, into different district, then you need to be able to um, evaluate what are the uh, best combinations of permutations, and and that require you to write a program, you know, that involves this concept called the factorial thing. Right, so how do we evaluate factorial? What does it factorial means? Right, so factorial is actually a mathematical operation that is written in the form n factorial. Right, so what it means is that if you have, um, so what does n factorial means? f factorial means Uh, what are the ways? So it means you can start out with n number of ways multiplied by n minus one number of ways followed by n minus two number one of ways and so on and so forth. Right. So if you have, I have an example here. If you have a three factorial, it means that you start with three the number of ways, uh, three, and then followed by three minus one, two, followed by uh, 3 minus 3, 1. So there are six ways of uh, formulating uh, your uh, the combinations. All right. So another way of uh, evaluating this uh, factorial is you look up for a symbol in a calculator. The calculator, you have the symbol. Right. And what you can do is that, for example, if you want to evaluate 3 factorial, you just press 3 followed by this symbol on the calculator and your calculator panel will show you six. So let's relax our mind before we go into uh, more details on this uh, factorial thing.
So let's try to um, solve this two problem. Um, but before that, maybe we, we can try using uh, some numerical values, uh, meaning let's try to evaluate um, 4, 2, right? So remember that um, we learned earlier on to evaluate 4, 2, you just you can use a calculator, 4C2 on your calculator, right? You press a 4, followed by the shift key, followed by the NCR symbol on your calculator, followed by 2. And then you would be able to get, what's the answer? You'll get 6, right? Okay, so let's say if you're going to use this formula here, right, do you think you will get 6 also as the answer? So let's try, yeah? right? So what this means is I can write it as four factorial, two factorial, right? Followed by four minus two. So four is your values of n. This is n. This is your r, right? So here will be n minus r, which is four minus two. So that gives you two factorial. Okay, you can use your calculator to work this out. If not, then we learn that 4 factorial is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? And 2 factorial is just 2 times 1 with another 2 times 1. Right, so let's try to solve this. So that will give us 2 times 1, that give us 12 over because two times one at the numerator you can divide it with the two times one at the denominator so you're left with 12 at the numerator and two at the denominator that give you six so can you see that the answer is the same as what you have here okay Right. So with the experience of managing the numerical values, we would have the confidence now to evaluate this. Right. So this will give us n factorial, right, 4 factorial, and then n minus 4 factorial, right? Okay, so what does n factorial mean? It means you start with the number n, then followed by n minus 1 ways, followed by n minus 1 minus 1, n minus 2, followed by n minus 2 minus 1, which is n minus 3, followed by n minus 4, followed by n minus 5, and so on and so forth, right? Then over your 4 factorial, which is just 4 times 3, times 2 times 1, right? And then I'm going to leave this n minus 4 factorial alone. Okay, so there's something interesting here. What is it that's interesting? Look at this one here. What does n minus 4, n minus 5 collapse into? What does it collapse into? It actually collapse into n minus 4 factorial, right? Okay, I'm going to pause here for you to think for a while. Why is that so? Right. So if you can understand this part here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it as n bracket n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, and then the rest is actually just n minus 4 factorial. Right, I can simplify this to be 24. Right, so can you see that this n minus 4 factorial at the numerator can divide the n minus 4 factorial at the denominator, and that will simplify the whole things to be this answer. 
Oh, sorry, let the film put exclamation mark, then you will mistake it as a factorial. Okay, the factorial things, the exclamation mark in math is actually the factorial symbol. All right, let's press on. Let's uh, apply the substitution trick that we have learned earlier, meaning that we should let uh, r equals to n minus 1. Okay, so what you have is something like this. All right, so we're going to substitute your r with n minus 1. And we will have n minus bracket n minus 1. And this will give us n minus n plus 1, give us 1. So you end up getting 1 factorial here. All right, so what is n factorial? n factorial means n bracket n minus 1, followed by n minus 2, followed by n minus 3, and so on and so forth, right? All right. And what is 1 factorial? 1 factorial is just 1. Okay, so we have learned earlier on that this, okay, this one can be collapsed into bracket m minus 1 factorial. Okay, think about it. So we can simplify it to be just n because the n minus 1 factorial can be divided with this n minus 1 factorial to get 1. And one time n will give you n. Okay, so how how are we how can we relate this to what we have learned earlier? If you were to recall, earlier on we learned that if you have five four, that is five c four, right? So if you use the calculator, right, five c four is just five. Okay, likewise, you can try another example on your own. 6, 5, that's it. So 6, 5 is 6, C, 5. And if you use the calculator, you actually will get a 6. So I think with this, you will have a better understanding of why is it that 5, C, 4 is equals to 5, or 6, C, 5 equals to 6, or 7, C, 6 equals to 7, so on and so forth. So with our uniform confidence, let's try to do some problem solving. Part 1, ask to find n2. So n2 is just n factorial, 2 factorial, n minus 2 factorial. Okay, and n factorial is n bracket n minus 1, bracket n minus 2, bracket n minus 3, so on and so forth. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, that gives you 2. You're going to keep n minus 2 factorial. Why are you going to keep that? Because if you were to recall, again, this guy here will collapse into n minus 2 factorial. Okay, so if you simplify further, right, this and this will give you 1. So you end up getting n bracket n minus 1 over 2. All right, so that is part 1. Let's, let's press on to do part 2. So part 2. Okay, be careful. This is not the fraction now. Right, so that will give you n plus 1 factorial over 3 factorial over n plus 1 minus 3. Okay, n plus 1 minus 3. So n plus 1 minus 3 will be n minus 2. All right, so n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1. n plus 1 minus 1 gives you n. Then n minus 1. Then n minus 1 minus 1. n minus 2. Then n minus 2 minus 1. n minus 3, so on and so forth. All right, so this again, okay, will collapse into n minus 2 factorial, and then the n minus 2 factorial divided with n minus 2 factorial gives you 1, 
so you will end up getting n plus 1 n n minus 1 over 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1 they give you 6 so these are what we have found in part 1 so let's try to solve part 2 so we need to form an equation which means n n oh, n to plus 1 and n minus 1 over 6 right this is equals to 4 times 4 over 1 4 times you write 4 is 4 over 1 times n2 which is n bracket n minus 1 over 2 all right we can do some simplification here what is the simplification we can do here we can divide both sides by n so the n will goes off we can divide both sides by n minus 1 so n minus n minus 1 go off and if you simplify further you're left with n plus 1 over 6 4 divided by 2 is 2 right 2 is 2 over 1 so that we can just do a simple cross multiply So that gives you n plus 1 equals to 12 and n is equals to 11. Right? That's how you um, solve uh, problems involving uh, the combinations formula. So after learning um, how to evaluate n for that say, which is equals to n factorial. 4 factorial n minus 4 factorial you know and then you simplify to get this so now the question is that do you really have to do these steps all the time or is there a shortcut right so if you were to look at the answers I'm going to give you a few more right a few more examples then you can see the shortcuts hmm. space All right, so can you see the shortcut there? Actually, there's no need to be always, um, you know, writing it out like n factorial is n bracket n times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, so on and so forth, you know. So the shortcut is that, you see, if, if, you, if you look at your R term here, your R term is 4, four right? Can you see that? I would have four terms at the numerator. 1, 2, three four okay so you, you will start with n in uh, decreasing order n minus one n minus two n minus three and then there will be also four terms at the denominator and you will start with four times three times two times one let's look at another example huh? you look at the r term five right means they're supposed to five terms at the numerator and n minus one one two three four five one two three four five right and at the denominator, we start with 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Also 5 terms. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Likewise, if it's n, n3, can you see? Look at the R term. So it's supposed to have 3 terms at the numerator. 1, 2, 3, and then 3 terms at the denominator. So that's the shortcut. So for example, if I want to evaluate n7, 
So that means I'm supposed to have seven terms at the numerator, starting with n, then n minus 1, n minus 2, over, start with 7, times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Okay? So that's how you can uh, simplify it using the shortcut. One last uh, problem sum involving a combination formula. So if you look at the questions, right, uh, we're supposed to expand this guy up to x cubed. And whatever terms that you are given, um, what you're given, whatever terms that you have gotten after expansion will be equals to this guy here. Okay, so without a delay, let's write down the binomial theorem. Without further delay. Right. Okay, I'm going to replace your a with one, so one to the power n, n one. All right, very important here, you have to bracket your px. Huh? You must bracket it. Why is it you must bracket it? Because if you don't bracket it, you end up like this. You end up this. Can you see the difference? When you bracket px to the power of 2, it means p squared x squared, okay, which is the correct one. But if you don't bracket it and you write this way, that means the square all right, only belongs to the x, not the p, which is wrong, which is the wrong concept because you need to square the whole thing. The whole thing meaning px, you need to square p, you also need to square x. That's the reason why you need to bracket it. So in binomial theorem, you have to be very careful with this, this kind of uh, small little detail, otherwise you won't get your answer and then you get very frustrated. All right, let's simplify further. 1 to the power n is 1. Okay, what is this guy here? It's actually n, right? But I'm going to show you after what we have learned about uh, the combinations uh, formula. n1 is actually just n factorial, right? 1 factorial, n minus 1 factorial. So n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, so on and so forth. So this guy is just n minus 1 factorial, right? 1 factorial is 1, so don't bother to write it down. So the n minus 1 factorial divided with the n minus 1 factorial gives you 1, so 1 times n gives you n. That's why in the beginning uh, in video 2 or 1, all right, um, I just ask you to simply use a calculator to evaluate 5, 1. 5, C, 1, that gives you 5. But now, after understanding how to evaluate the combinations formula, right, you will understand why is it. 5c1 is 5. Why is it that uh, nc1 is just n? And that's also the reason why I leave this part to the end. Because if I were to introduce it in video 1 or 2, you'll be, you'll confuse you further. Because binomial theorem itself is actually quite a confusing chapter. All right, so let's continue. So n1 is just n. 1 to the power anything is 1. So that'll give you px n2 p squared x squared p cubed x cubed all right so that will be equals to 1 plus 4x okay so we can do a comparison obviously 1 equals to 1 so we're not going to be bothered with it so we're going to compare p npx equals to 4x divided by x on both sides so np is equals to 4 the two unknowns there we can't do anything much so we're just going to keep it uh, and then of course this guy here is equal to this guy it's, it's very logical right you just compare x squared with x squared 
x cubed with x cubed, x with x, one with one, the kind of thing, okay? So, all right, you can divide by p squared, x squared, and both sides. So you end up with this equals to 28. Okay, we can use, we're going to use a shortcut. Huh? So n2 means at the numerator, there are two terms. Huh? So we start with n and then n minus 1. Denominator is just 2 times 1. Equals to 28. You can do a cross multiply and the expansion. Get this and then you factorize it. All right, so n equals to negative 7. Obviously, we reject not applicable. So therefore, n is equals to 8. All right, so we have found the values of n. We can substitute into equation 1 to get p. So sub n equals to 8. Okay. And then uh, we can now sub p equals to half and n equals to 8 into n3 p cube x cube and that give us k x cube so you divide by x cube on both sides so k will be equals to n3 p cube and it's 8 so 8 3 p cube p is half Okay, I don't have a calculator, so I'm just going to use what I've learned. So 8, 3 means, what does 8, 3 mean? Means there are three terms at the numerator, right? So 8 times 7 times 6, and 3 times 2 times 1. This and this go off, so give you 56. Then 56, half to the power of 3, it's half time, half time, half times 1 over 8, 7. So they give you 7. Okay, just use your calculator to evaluate you will get 7. Okay, otherwise, if you're interested to know how to do it without using a calculator, I'm going to show it to you again. Huh? Which is actually very easy. Right. Remember, 8, 3 means what? Look at your R term. R is 3, right? Means there's supposed to be 3 terms at the numerator, right? So you start with N, right? N, which is 8, right? And then 8 minus 1, 7, right? 7 minus 1, 6. 3 terms there. 1, 2, 3. Stop, ready. Then the bottom is just 3 times 2 times 1, right? So 3 times 2 is 6, 6 and 6 can cancel off each other. So 8 times 7 is 56. Then half to the power of 3 is half times half times half, which gives you 1 over 8. 56 times 1 over 8 will give you 7. That's how you can do it also. Okay, that's a good way of practice using uh, mental calculations instead of keep using the calculator.